honeysuckle, some snapdragons, and ranunculus. And I think that the color in the ranunculus was really interesting to me. This is a picotee, but if you look closely, you'll notice that there is a yellow undertone in this flower that really goes nicely with this honeysuckle. So it's a great transition piece between the two. And then these sweet snapdragons, which I absolutely love, the open-faced kind. They have that little bit of yellow in their center. So this is one of those purple and yellow complementary color palettes that can be a little bit tricky to pull off, but when you have that flower that has both of the colors already in it, that makes it so much easier. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this. For level one, I'm gonna use the honeysuckle to create the shape of my arrangement, gonna use it to cover the base, and um, it's gonna play a role in movement just because of how it, how it flows and goes. Thinking about that triangular placement pattern. Long, medium, short. Keeping the things on this side balanced with the things on this side. Constant process of put something in, add something to balance it out. Put something in, add something to balance it out. Man, this guy's committed to being attached. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. You're free to move about, little honeysuckle. So now I'm gonna put a short, a medium, and we'll do a long one over here. So this would be great. I'm gonna go out and go low. Be fantastic for a long table. sink this one kind of down more in the center to get that coverage in there, create the net for the ranunculus to hang out. these in case we need to add a little bit more later on. I'm going to use some of these snapdragons to carry some of this purple color out to the sides of the arrangement. And the shape of these is well suited to do just that. Again, this one, I'm, I'm going more symmetrical with it. Still a nice, loose, organic feel, but more, more symmetrical. I'm evenly distributing the, the color and ingredients, half and half. Okay, the ranunculus that I really want to shine are the ones that have the most prominent yellow undertones that you see here. See how some of these are a little bit more white? So I want to save those two so that I can really hammer home this color progression. I'm going to sink some of these other ones low. Again, I'm just really dispersing the color pretty evenly is the, the point. 
Maybe when I put the big one in the left side, I'll do a medium and small one in the right side. Do the opposite over here, opposite sides placement. Mm, this one has a little yellow too, that's pretty, let's do that. You can see big one, opposite big one. Small, medium, small, medium, opposite. Everything stays balanced. Now I'm gonna go out to the edges. But I don't want to have these two things on the exact same level if I want to have a more movement, graceful appeal, and I do with this one. Not that you couldn't do that, you can. I would just probably do it a little bit differently than I'm showcasing this. And if you look at these three together, you can see they all have that little bit of a yellow tone in them. Flip them over and you'll see which one doesn't belong. It's this one here on the right side. So what I'm gonna do, rather than putting these two that don't go together perfectly and oppose one another, I'm gonna put these two together and this one on the opposite side. So that's how you can manage those, manage those moments. I'm gonna make sure that I put these two guys right next to all of this honeysuckle. So that's, that's the simple three ingredient that's a little bit more symmetrical in shape. Showing you how to think about that in a different way. Excited to see how you implement these things and switch them up to make 